the news of the last 18 hours, and certainly in the technology world, has been what's going on with Jeff Bezos or what's next with Jeff Bezos. And, you know, my first thought to this was who got to Bezos? I mean, why would a general commanding an army winning their most successful battles at the height of their campaign, why would he relinquish command? You know, why would someone who has perhaps more power than almost anyone else in the world, why would they give up that power? Well, the obvious answer is they wouldn't. There's no chance that Jeff Bezos is giving up power. He's obviously not giving up uh, control of the company. In going from CEO to executive chairman, he's in many respects insulating himself, uh, maintaining control, maintaining executive authority, but stepping back from the day to day. So it doesn't necessarily mean that he's turning his back on Amazon, but it does suggest that he's got something else on his agenda, something else on his horizon. And he's, you know, uh, got some other master plan when it comes to his next future. Now, there's, of course, lots of speculation, lots of people wondering sort of what's going on, what the future for Jeff Bezos might be. And that's where I, I you know, uh, here in MetaViews, I kind of think one way for us to explore the headlines would be to look at uh, who our followers or who we're following and what they're tweeting. So rather than go onto the internet as a whole, I think it would be more interesting to sort of look at our subjective view, what we see when we look at Twitter, in particular in the case in Jeff Bezos. So these are some of the tweets that I saw amongst the people we follow and their take on what's going on with Jeff Bezos. You know, Caitlin Johnstone points out that Jeff Bezos stepping down as Amazon CEO will be replaced by an AI program, which will deliver a shock when employees use bathroom or utter the word union. And while this is obviously meant in jest, it does sort of evoke the idea that maybe Jeff Bezos is leaving the company at a time when the company's going to face a lot of challenges. Uh, certainly when it comes to union organizing, certainly when it comes to antitrust and regulation, but maybe also when it comes to further optimization. Because as a company, Amazon is as optimized as you can get. They exploit their workers perhaps more efficiently than any other corporation in the history of capitalism. But nonetheless, maybe there's more room if they use even more draconian algorithms or come up with an even harsher workplace. It might be convenient for the face of the company, the man who founded the company, to create a little distance between himself when that happens. Now, another person we follow, uh, Edward Alguizo Jr., pointed out, personally, he wanted to remove Bezos by force, but this will do for now. And this kind of speaks to the symbolism of when a leader steps down, that it's kind of better if you do it on your own terms. And it does perhaps benefit Bezos to be the author of his own exit, although it may sat not satisfy uh, fellow travelers like Edward, who, you know, might want a little bit more drama, a little more symbolism to the way in which they handle the episode. Now, Edward had a, a few tweets, in fact, quite a number of tweets on the subject. You know, Jeff Bezos taught me it's okay to support ICE. He taught me it's okay to steal at least $67 million in tips from your drivers. Jeff Bezos taught me it's okay to spy on your workers with the Pinkertons. He taught me it's okay to create hellish working conditions and fight unions. I mean, he goes on. But the point of this thread, I think well made, is that we should think about Bezos' legacy. We, we shouldn't mythologize what he's done at Amazon but be more transparent, be more honest about the history that he leaves behind him, because that's often why leaders uh, uh, make these decisions at the moments they do, is it is an effort to spin and control their legacy. So, you know, good thing there's Twitter so that people can offer, you know, dissenting opinions. Uh, another thread from uh, uh, Edward. What's funny is that as far as I can tell, the new Amazon CEO is worse than Bezos on almost every single issue. Choose a random topic and Andy Jassy has probably volunteered a shitty and concerning take that has gone through an order of magnitude of less lawyers and flags. So, you know, this is another interesting barb coming from Ed suggesting that there's a lot of pressure on this new leader and he's been chosen for the primary purpose that he's already been shaped by the corporate culture, 
right? He's already been forged in terms of Bezos's vision because Bezos has been a very hands-on leader and the culture that he's created at Amazon reflects his priorities, reflects his values. So in having Andy Jassy come on as his successor, it's not only a clear signal that he intends to maintain control, but there will be no changes at Amazon corporate for the foreseeable future. And is that a good thing? I mean, yeah, the company's winning. Yeah, they're uh, certainly dominating here in this pandemic economy. But is that enough? Do they need to be anticipating in the, uh, for the future? Although what is Jeff Bezos anticipating in the future? That's what I think will, will be interesting to watch moving forward. The Tech Won't Save Us podcast shared this perhaps relevant and accurate uh, uh, archival footage, shall we say, of Jeff Bezos or his archetypical predecessor uh, and, and why they're doing what they're doing in that uh, the restrictions on an executive chairman in terms of their ability to sell their stock or uh, 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 invest or do other things is less restrictive. So this might just be about money. This might just be about taxes. This might be an easier way for Bezos to unlock some of his wealth from the company to do other things with it. You know, Zephyr Teachout, the uh, New York aspiring politician, writes, I think Bezos read Break Em Up and saw the writing on the wall, you know, suggesting that Amazon is about to be dismantled, that the antitrust actions against Amazon are quite substantive. I mean, that's worth, where it is worth noting that Andy Jassy is, uh, formally ran the Amazon Web Services Unit. It's the cloud computing arm of Amazon. So, you know, if you were going to break up the company, putting the head of the cloud division uh, uh, certainly may give signals as to how the company is either anticipating a breakup or might fight a breakup. And clearly they want to make sure that their cloud operations are, are central to, to the future of the company. Another tweet from Hypervisible, Bezos decided he needed more time to personally supervise the construction of his lair. Now, that's actually kind of a viable scenario in the midst of a pandemic. Like, if you are the second richest person of the world and you are looking out from your penthouse and you see the world crumbling, you, you look out on the internet, you see the analytics that Amazon has and you see everyone stocking up and planning for the doomsday, you might be susceptible to that kind of psychology, right? You might start thinking, oh, it is the end of the world. I better start planning. I better start figuring things out. So while this is clearly made in jest, perhaps it's not inaccurate. Perhaps there's some truth to it. And then there's our friends at Athena, which is the peer-to-peer uh, -peer internet service provider, the, the network trying to bring the internet to the people all around the world as, as cheaply as possible. You know, they, they offered a really internet uh, interesting tweet thread. Uh, you know, today Jeff Bezos has decided to head for the exits rather than face the music. You know, in response to stepping down as Amazon CEO, Athena for All Coalition released the following statement. The company Jeff Bezos started nearly three decades ago is under a cloud of scrutiny with regulators from both sides of the aisle firing arrows from D.C. and lawmakers asking hard questions in states across the country. Workers are speaking up, walking out, and organizing against miserable working conditions, undaunted by Amazon's attempt to silence them. Communities living in the shadow of Amazon's warehouses are demanding Amazon address and drastically curb its toxic emissions. Small businesses are banding together to challenge Amazon's anti-competitive practices like never before. And after a year that finally forced Amazon to open up to the destruction it inflicts on communities, workers, businesses, the climate, and our democracy itself, Jeff Bezos has decided to head for the exits rather than face the music. The departure of Jeff Bezos is an acknowledgement that the Amazon fantasy has crumbled and the, rea the reality of Amazon has set in. Jeff Bezos' departure won't meaningfully change Amazon's course, especially since Bezos will still be the executive chair of the Amazon board. Andy Jassy's tenure leading Amazon AWS through ring contracts with almost 2,000 police departments, powering ICE, DHS, developing recognition and hosting Parley should be deeply disturbing to anyone who cares about poverty and racial justice. If there's any reason why Jeff Bezos is leaving, 
It's through the bravery of workers, businesses, neighbors, and advocates in challenging the cheery picture that Amazon likes to move forward. They've shown that Amazon is both a symbol and driver of the worst excesses of racial capitalism, eroding our economy and democracy. Public officials must respond to their work, break up and regulate Amazon and corporations like them. Meanwhile, the work to end Amazon's dangerous hold on our economy will continue no matter who serves as Amazon's public face. I mean, that's a pretty fantastic statement, right? To see uh, an initiative like Athena not just tweet out something kind of pithy and snarky, but to actually come forward with like an almost manifesto, like a call to arms. I, I mean, that's part of why I really admire uh, Athena as a network and why we featured them uh, uh, previously in our uh, uh, future fiber series. And we'll come back to them again. You know, Julian, uh, our pal Julian Yolaret in the chat here mentions, you know, if he's going to be executive chair, what's the big difference R really? And that's true on a corporate policy level that the company is still trying to tell the world steady as she goes, we're not going to change anything. But I think the point of Athena's manifesto is to argue that this is kind of a sign of weakness. You know, I personally am hypothesizing that this is a power move by Bezos, that, you know, he's got some larger master plan at work. You know, my, my friend Mark Jeftovich even suggested this is Bezos starting his presidential campaign, you know, Bezos 2024. But I think that the real difference here is showing that Amazon recognizes the, the public narrative has changed. The, the way in which people think about Amazon is changing. And it's partly because they're so successful. It's partly because they're winning this pandemic and everyone's realized, wow, Amazon is such a huge and powerful entity. And I used to always joke, you know, if we don't do something about Amazon soon, at some point in the future, we're not going to use the word economy anymore we're just going to talk about Amazon. Like that's going to be the word. That's going to be the sort of synonym that we use. And so I think that's why we should be talking about what's next for Bezos. I think that's why we should be recognizing the kind of difference of what's going on. And I think that's actually why it's a good opportunity right now for people to reflect uh, on you know, the legacy uh, of what not just Bezos, but uh, uh, Amazon as a whole has to offer because I think Amazon is entering a, a new chapter of its existence. And, and this is an important uh, a pivot. This, this is an important time for, for them to.